What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. MSI finally announced their brand new handheld gaming console and I was lucky enough to go hands on with it at CES. I can tell you right off the bat, it actually feels really good in the hand. Not super heavy and really when you compare it to let's say the size of the ROG Ally, they're right on par with each other. There are some awesome features built in here and I do wanna go over some of that stuff. I wasn't able to do any performance testing myself, but as soon as I can get one and do some testing, I will make several videos on it. And if you're not familiar with this upcoming handheld, it's known as the MSI Claw A1M. Basically what we've got here is a seven inch 1080p IPS display at 120 Hertz, dual two watt speakers, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4. It's actually using hall based triggers and analog sticks. Obviously we've got a little bit of RGB around those analog sticks and the face buttons A, B, X, and Y also have RGB. It's got a fingerprint sensor built in for logging in super quickly. A 53 watt hour battery and a 65 watt PD fast charger is included in the box. So if you take a look at the specs of this, we actually get a total of 16 cores, six performance cores, eight efficiency cores, and two ultra low power cores. We've also got 22 threads along with this. It's got a max turbo up to 4.8 gigahertz. The six performance cores are gonna boost up to 4.8. The efficiency cores are gonna boost up to 3.8. And the low power efficiency cores go up to 2.5. Now that just covers the CPU portion of Intel's new Meteor Lake chips because along with this, we also have an iGPU. It's an Intel Arc iGPU. It's got a maximum dynamic frequency up to 2.25 gigahertz. AXE cores, it supports DirectX 12.1, OpenGL 4.6, OpenCL 3.0. And yeah, I mean, it's a modern iGPU. And I've already done some testing on a laptop with that 155H. Very early testing, but at higher wattages, this does outperform the 7840U with those RDNA 3 graphics. So far, not looking too bad. I actually love the way they've got the RGB set up. This is MSI's Mystic Light. Got the RGB around the analog sticks and the face buttons. It is using hall-based triggers and hall-based analog sticks, so we don't have to worry about drift, and they're super accurate. Supports Thunderbolt 4, so connecting an eGPU is super easy with this, or fast storage is really up to you. Dual 2-watt front-facing stereo speakers, and I was able to test these out. They sound absolutely amazing on this device. When it comes to the overall layout, as you can see on the rear here, we do have a lot of ventilation. It's also got those two macro buttons, left, right trigger, shoulder buttons, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Up top, we'll get that Thunderbolt 4, along with a micro SD card reader and our fingerprint slash power button up top here. Moving around to the front, obviously, we've got our D-pad, dual analog sticks, a dedicated view button, MSI center, they're calling this the M button. Also got a menu button and a quick settings button. Another thing we saw at CES was just a performance chart. Now keep in mind that the MSI Claw has the 155H. This is actually showing off the 165H's performance, but they are using the same GPU. They are really stressing XESS, which is Intel scaling technology, but it's not looking bad. The lower end bars on the chart is showing off the older Core i7-1370P. For the mid-range there, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 165H. We've also got that in purple with XESS turned on. If you're interested in learning more about the MSI Claw, you can head right over to the MSI website. I'll leave a link in the description. They've got a lot of great stuff over here. This will come pre-installed with Windows 11 Home. A very ergonomic design. Like I mentioned, did go hands-on with it and it feels really nice. We've got those MSI Quick Settings. And uh, you can kind of scroll through here, just get an idea of what's going on. We will have some performance settings. and this will do kind of a docked mode setup up to 40 watts. So we can definitely expect some really great performance in docked mode. We don't have to worry about battery when we're plugged into the wall. So connecting this to a larger display and wall power is really going to up that performance. And again, we don't have to worry about battery life there because we are connected to power. New cooling system, which uh, from what I can tell so far, not too bad. It's the Hyperflow cooling system. It's going to keep that Ultra 7 155 nice and cool, even at those higher wattages. But yeah, this is something I'm super excited about. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this something you're interested in? Are you going to wait it out, see what kind of performance this thing's putting out, or just wait for a totally new chipset for a different handheld? Let me know down below. Again, I'll have the MSI website listed in the description. Like always, thanks for watching.